भगवान की स्वरूप शक्ति है लागू और समृद्धि सार है वो समझ जाती है कि ये व्यक्ति प्रकृति भूख में क्या पैसा है ये देवी है मैं तो जैसे ऐसे कोई भाव है वो सर्वशक्ति की वृष्टि है वो सब कुछ जानती है कथा हमारे अंदर में आएंगी नहीं तो नहीं आएगी ये कथा भी क्या है वही कथा भी सर्वशक्ति की वृष्टि लाती और समृद्ध का सार है तब तो वो कथा के माध्यम से भी यहाँ पर पहुंचे कोई नहीं 
in order to attain his aim and objective. So, Srila Gurudev was saying, comparing the, the determination of the public training to uh, devotees who come to the club, but how? Oh, with so much money in their pockets. Mm-hmm. And they don't uh, give donations and distribute to the Vaishnavas. And they're keeping all their money in their pocket and they're thinking, I will use this for my own uh, happiness, my own sense gratification. Mm-hmm. And they come and then quite uh, duplicitous. They're, so such persons, their um, character, it can never be uh, changed. They can never be rectified. Just like the tail of a dog. If you try it again and again and again to make the tail of a dog straight, but then when you let go, immediately it springs back and becomes crooked again. So Gurudev is saying, we should not be like this. We should be like the fruit seller coming to Vrindavan and ready to give up all our own personal considerations, all comforts, and all aspirations for enjoyment. And try to abandon everything and come completely in the Anodakya, under the guidance of Guru and Vaishnavas. This is actually the fruit of hearing. So, Guru is mentioning the example given by Pujapad Srila Bhaktivedanta Trivikram Maharaj. He said that Sanatana Goswami, he left his home, his wealth, family, and everything. And even when he'd given up everything, then he even also, there was one servant who was selling him. He even gave up his servant. And Bharat Maharaj, also the example of Bharat Maharaj in Srimad Bhagavatam. Even in his young age, he left his uh, vast kingdom and vast wealth as if it was school. So, we will have to give up everything and make a very strong vow like the fruit seller. If we want that this Harikata will enter into our heart. Why? Because Harikata is no ordinary thing. This Harikata is the manifestation of the essence of Sambit Shakti and the Dini Shakti, transcendental potency. So only those who abandoning everything and being very determined uh, and giving up all duplicity, this Qatar, it will enter into their heart, not into the heart of everyone. So the Father training, she had made a vow to do or die. And forgetting everything, she again came in the vicinity of the house of Nanda Maharaj and she was crying. Hey Govinda, hey Krishna. So, Gurudev is mentioning, if one will be absorbed and leaving everything and chanting Krishna's name with tears coming from the eyes, then what will be the result of this? What will Krishna do? So, there is the example of during the time of Ras Lila, when Krishna left the Ras, what did the gopis do? They assembled together on the bank of Jamuna and they began to kirtan. And that kirtan, the influence was such that Krishna was unable to check himself and he again appeared amongst them. <coughs> so, it's written in Purana also, Naham Krishnani Vaikunte, Yogi Nam Ridi Eshuva. Krishna saying, I am, where am I? You will not find me in Vaikunta. You will not find me in the hearts of the yogis. Where will you find me? In that place where my devotees are doing kirtan. I must go there. So, Gurudev was saying, this is the uh, power of Kirtan and the power of Harinam. There are so many very vicious and sinful activities, like abortion, killing the baby, unborn babies in the womb, and uh, intoxication, and so many varieties of sinful activities. But all such very atrocious crimes, the reactions for these activities can be immediately washed away by what? Only by Nama Bas, only by the semblance of Hari Nam. The Nama Bas destroys all sins. There is no need, uh, it is not necessary to chant Shuddha Nam to get rid of all of these things. The chanting of the pure name. Only the semblance of the name destroys all of these things. So Srila Gurudev was citing the example of Ajamil. When the Yamadutas they came to take Ajamil away, the Vishnu Dutas came and, and stopped the Yamadutas. So the Yamadutta said, this person is very sinful. He's performed all kinds of very atrocious activities. But the Vishnu Dutta said, no, 
This has no simple reactions whatsoever. All of his sins have been cleansed away. Why? Because he gave his son the name Nariah. And again and again, he was <coughs> chanting and remembering his name, Nariah, Nariah, Nariah. So he became completely cleansed of all sinful activities. So, Shri Guru Guru Nanak Dev also told, Brahma Dev also told, Tepus tapaste yudu shastu rajya samhaan shri ram shri nanti. Those who are chanting then, all that then done all kinds of price cheap. No one is doing all this. They have done to all things. They have done all things. So, Shri Guru Nanak Dev said, Kapil Dev. It's told his mother, a whole bunch of swap, bunch of tall guy in. That even those who are uh, in the very low caste and the dog eating caste, then if they chant the name of Krishna, then what is the result of that? It is to be considered that they don't have to do any other atonement, that they've visited all the holy places, that they have uh, performed all kinds of sadhana, bhajan, and all kinds of austerities, and that they've completed their studies in the Vedas. So this Nam is extremely powerful. And Srila Gurudev was commenting that if this Nam of us can destroy all kinds of sins, then what will be the result of hearing this sweet Hari Kattwa of Krishna's pastimes in Braj from the lips of a pure Vaishnava? What will be the result? It is quite incomparable. We cannot even compare the chanting of Nam of us to hearing Hari Kata, the sweet pastimes of Krishna, such as this Dhamma Lila from the lips of a, a pure Vaishnava. What will be the effect of hearing this? So those who have no faith in hearing this Hari Kata, oh, then they are great offenders. This is a great offense. They are most the lowest of all. So then Srila Gurudev continued how the Talmud Krani was singing and completely absorbed in Krishna Nam. And she sat down and she was chanting, chanting and crying with her heart melting. So at that time, <coughs> Krishna, he was inside the house and he was playing in the grain silo. There was a very large stock of wheat there. And Krishna at this time, he was about two and a half years old. So he'd seen how his parents would bath with grains. So he took some grains in his hands, in his very tiny hands, and he came outside. So Falvik Rani, she didn't dare to come inside the compound of the house of Nanda Maharaj. Why? Because she was from someone lower caste. So she didn't dare to come outside. But Krishna being inside, when he heard her calling, oh, come and take very sweet and juicy fruits. <laughs> then some water came on his tongue and he picked up the grains and he went outside and came and he was standing in front of the fruit cell. And she saw him. How did he look? Oh, very, very sweet. So charming. His mother had tied his hair on his head and put the peacock feather in his hair. And he was decorated nicely. And Chandan on his body, very, very uh, uh, enchanting in his appearance. So Krishna came before, before her and was holding out his hands. Uh, oh, please give me fruits, give me fruits. So when she saw him, oh, she was, her heart was completely stolen away by his astonishing beauty. Who is Krishna? He is the essence of all uh, lavanya, all lustra, of all things beautiful all combined together, the essence of that, that is in Krishna. Krishna is that absolute truth who is established by all of the aphorisms of Vedanta. And he is the hero of all universes. And now he is standing before Vikrani and saying, give me food, give me food. So when she saw him, oh, she forgot everything. She became almost unconscious seeing him. So she was unconscious and and just absorbing the beauty of Krishna. And Krishna said, oh, please give me fruit, give me fruit. So she came in sense. And she said, okay, I can give you fruit, but on one condition. You should sit in my lap, and you should call me mother. So then when Krishna heard this, 
So oh, how can you do this? This is very difficult. It's a very difficult thing for me to do. Because she showed is my mother. How can I call her mother? And she is somewhat lower caste also. So Krishna was afraid anyone might see him. So then Krishna, he was looking left and right to make sure that no one was watching. And quickly, he jumped into the lap of the uh, fruit seller and said, Oh mother, give me fruit. And then immediately he jumped up and then stood in front of her again. Oh, give me fruit, give me fruit. <laughs> so, how fortunate is this fruit seller that Krishna came in, in her lap and called her, Oh mother, Oh mother. So then Krishna, he was looking at the fruits that he particularly wanted and he was pointing them Oh, you give me this mango and this banana and this one and this one and this one. And so the fruit seller began to, she could not put it in his hands because his hands were so small. So holding his arms like this, she began to load up his arms with as many fruits as she could. So then when Krishna's arms were full of fruits, then he looked, looked at her with a very crooked side of the and then he went returning to the house. So then when Krishna came into the house, his mother said, oh, where did you get all these fruits from? And she was taking the fruits, and Yashoda Maya, she began herself to personally distribute the fruits to all of Krishna's friends. And many sacrifices were coming, and it didn't matter how many friends were coming, she was distributing <coughs> the fruits, they were, they were never finished. There was no shortage. And when they began to taste those fruits, oh, what was the taste like? Undescribable, unprecedented, so sweet. So Mother Yashoda, she distributed these fruits to, to all. And outside, what happened to the fruit seller? Oh, she was sitting there. And Krishna, he had stolen her heart. Because Krishna is a great thief. So one question of Kavya is written. Praje prasidham anapanita chonam gopanthranam chatukula chonam adhe prajanmajita papa choram I give my pranam to the foremost of all thieves. It's very famous in Braj as a butter thief. And Gopanganam Cha Dukul Chauram. He's stolen the Dukul of the Gopis. So Dukul means the, the cause of the Gopis. Because we know when the Braj Gopis they were doing Katiani Braj. On the last day they took bath in Jamuna and they were left their cloth on the back of Jamuna. And Krishna came there and stole their dukkha, their cloth. But Krishna, but Srila Gurudev here is giving another comment. There's a, there's a further meaning of the word dukkha. Dukkha means do to cool, two dynasties. Krishna is stealing the gopis from the dynasty of their father and from the dynasty of their husband, taking them away. So it's called Gopatanamcha dukkha the Chura. So Krishna is a great thief and he'd stolen the heart of the fruit seller and now she becomes completely mad. And the, she was sitting there until the evening and the evening came and then when the evening came she took her empty basket and she put it upon her head and she began moving in the direction of Jamuna, absorbing thoughts of Krishna. So as she approached the back of Jamuna, then she felt that the basket on her head which was originally empty, was now very heavy. So she's thinking, how did it become so heavy? So she took the basket down from her head and she looked inside. And what was there? Oh, this great, invaluable wealth. So many jewels, pearls, diamonds. Unimaginable wealth was there in the basket. So what did she give to Krishna? Only a few fruits. And what did Krishna give? Oh, invaluable wealth. But upon seeing this, then she felt that these jewels have no value. Why? Because she was maddened in separation from Krishna. She was feeling very, very high separation from Krishna. So she just took the basket and she threw all the jewels into the river. And she just began chanting. Krishna Nam absorbed the brain. He never returned to Mathura in home. Never returned. Where she went? So she did not return to Mathura. No one can understand where she went. She became mad and wondering in Gopu. Who can say where she went? But we can understand that by Krishna's cause of mercy that she went to Galop Vrindavan. And there, this very day, she's there now 
like a mother of Krishna in Vrindavan and always drinking the nectar of Krishna's beauty. So this is the result of having Krishna's darshan. I've seen Krishna one time. This is the result of hearing Hare Krishna. If one will see Krishna once or hear Hare Krishna, that person can never return to their home. Krishna said we come and we have darshan. Or we hear Hare Krishna. We're going to darshan. It's quite bogus. Because afterwards we see and then we go home. <laughs> but if one will actually take darshan of Krishna, well then he will never leave Vrindavan. So in this way, Krishna is drowning the inhabitants of Gokul in the pools of ecstasy. Uh, Oh, 
1000 rupees, 300, 3000 rupees, 250 rupees. I think that first day are getting so painful, awful, like a time in time. I think that you have fun. Recover in a day. Don't think that we have limited so much money. Nothing you have done. You cannot pay anything past here. <coughs> so we are all dead to question. All this. <coughs> you should not think that we are here. All, all problems so in the head. Nothing, nothing, nothing. So all four hundred and a half. And so beautiful people. Yes, it is that. Then it's all. He told one thing. <coughs> you should try to remember this. He told that if we are in collective way to Vaishnav all are here. And we are <coughs> observing this car. Here in so high class of powerful and speed for the If anyone thinks that, oh, nothing to gain in this collective place, I should chant one like name separately. And I should do parikrama of Govardhan. Why? Gandhavati, one time, one like this. In, in, in so many days. And I will take with Bhav for this. हम लोग प्रतिज्ञा करके नियम अनुसार से ये कर रहे हैं कि अकेले कर रहा और हम लोग इस कलाकृति के रूप में ये कर रहे हैं कोटी कोटी जन्मों में अकेला करके कुछ नहीं कर सकता क्या लाभ होकर इसका उदाहरण हम दिखला रहे हैं एट द टाइम ऑफ आवर टू डे देव आर डिसाइडिंग ऑफ टू डे और कॉल फॉर यंग कर and we used to do parikrama with our guru day. Here in this thing, fast, fast. And taking prasadha, I will do that. He saw that, oh, they are not going actually near Shiva. They are taking rice, dal, chapati, and some they can see now, oh, sweet rice and <coughs> And the dog can stop. Oh, I should go alone. Go, Govardhan and Kalagaya. Alone. And he used to chant one like Harinam Devi. And do Parikrama with how? Dalmati Parikrama. He used to. He neglected Guru Maharaj and all this society. <coughs> And he used to stop only taking something very little. After that, he thought that I am such a My doing this is such a That means nothing. Oh, good is also not falling. They bring solve all this. What happened? What happened? Oh, they got जैसे ये ठीक नहीं है, रिक्शा मांगना ये ठीक नहीं, हम रिक्शा चलाएंगे पहले ही, किंतु अपने जीवन को पार्टिंग करके हर काम करेंगे और गोवर्धन की परिक्रमा करेंगे और भजन करेंगे और एक लाख करेंगे और भजन करेंगे। कंटिन्यू ही बॉर्ड के रिक्शा। दैट आई शुड मेंटेन माय सेल्फ not begging and not like this. So he bought a red shop and he began to only hear chanting them, but his name was reduced. After some time, a desire to marry him, but he was black, no money. Say black fish, 